The Ender 5 series has been around for a while now. It's a staple of the Creality lineup, and we've seen many iterations of it over the years. In the past, it seemed like you had to mod the heck out of these things to get them to do what you wanted them to do. But with Creality's latest version, the Ender 5 Max, they aim to give you an all-in-one package that works right out of the box in its stock form. Oh, and did I mention this thing is huge. It has a massive 400 millimeter cubed build volume. Oh, and it's fast too. There is some assembly required with this printer, so I'll go through the process of putting it together. So first we have the installation guide, which I am going to read pretty thoroughly because this printer comes in a lot of pieces and it's going to be more of assembly than we're used to. You know, these new printers, a lot of them are super easy, out of the box, a few bolts assembled. This one, it's going to be a bit more involved. So it comes with one roll of filament. And then here it looks like, I think these are the parts of the frame. These look like the wires that'll connect to the extruder. We have the usual accessory bag. Looks like a lot of bolts, some zip ties, and a few other things. So we'll go through that in a minute. I think this is a screen just from the looks of it. We have a few brackets here. What well, looks like the spool holder. And your trusty side cutters. Your power cable here. This, I'm not sure what this is yet, but we'll have to look in the instructions to figure that out. So I'm gonna pull this out. This looks like the top of the printer. I can see the extruder and hot end assembly here. And under here, this looks like the bed. It's flipped upside down, so that's the top of the bed there, and this should bolt on to the bottom. You can see the giant build plate volume, 400 by 400. And these look like more frame rails as well. Here I can see these are, we have dual lead screws, two sets, so one set on each side. Each one has two lead screws in it. Each one has its own motor on it because this bed is supposedly able to hold 15 kilograms of filament on it, so that's pretty impressive. And this looks like the base of the printer containing the power supply, motherboard, connectors and stuff. So first up, I'm going to attach what they call the profiles to the base of the printer. These are basically the, the frame pieces. And it's all nicely numbered here, one to four, so it's easy to assemble. The bolts are also very nicely labeled and correspond to the instructions, so it's very easy to assemble. Now this might be a little awkward by yourself, but you can do it. So I am going to first line up the number. I'm going to hang it just slightly over the edge of the desk so I can put it over top. Then I'm going to screw in from the bottom. And then I'm just going to do the same for the other three corners. And this is what it should look like once you have all four on. Next up, I'm just going to attach the foot pads right onto where I attached those frame pieces using just one M4 by 12 screw with a washer. Then I'm going to repeat that with all four corners. So next up, we're going to put the top component, which is the whole upper assembly, onto the base here. And then just make sure when you put the top on, you've pulled these wires out of the way. And then each corner is going to take two M565 bolts with two of these locking washers. Actually, the back side I said has two. There's only one on each side. So next up, I'm going to put on the lead screws, or as they're referred to in the manual, the Z-axis component. Now there's two of them. They are identical, so you can put them on either sides. So first up, it says to remove these two screws before you put it in. 
So you can see there's two types of M512 bolts. So just to clarify below, they say the application. So this one says Z-axis component. So you know that's for the Z-axis here. And this will be for the hotbed. So I just wanted to highlight when you're putting on the Z component, these little tabs here are gonna line up with this hole here. And then that's where the screw will go in. You make sure you line these up. Otherwise, the whole assembly is not gonna fit in. And make sure you're putting it in the right way. This motor is gonna be facing inwards. So if those tabs aren't aligned correctly, this is not gonna be able to slide under here. And now that that's in, you just put in the screws right here, the M522. And you can pass through your wrench and tighten them up. And before you bolt in the top screws here, you have to loosen these grub screws. Just one little turn. And now you can retighten the grub screw. Now that the lead screws are on, we can attach the Z-axis motors. And in the next step, it says to remove the screws from the power supply cover. So now we're gonna insert the heated bed connector. And then we're gonna undo this a bit, slide that down and tighten this. And this is just to prevent any water from getting in. There's a rubber gasket on the back there. And now we'll connect the bed leveling wire on the outside here. And at this point, we can reinstall the cover. And at this point, we can now put in the whole bed assembly here. So you're just gonna maneuver it in, try to avoid bending any wires or pinching anything. And then it just sits on the Z-axis assembly. And now we can screw in the eight M5 by 12 bolts to each corner of the bed. Now we're gonna install the screen, but in order to do that, we have to feed this cable up. So you are going to remove this seal here along the frame, run the cable up out the top and tuck it into the frame. And then when that's done, you're gonna put the seal back on to hold it in place. So with that in place, we can now install the screen bracket. You'll just pull this wire up out of the way. This will sit on here and then you'll put the screws in, in these three slots. So those are the M4 by six screws. Now we can just plug it in in the back here. Now we can attach the spool holder with the two M5 by 30 bolts onto the side frame here. And now this part, which I wasn't sure what it was earlier, is actually just a support for the cables, just to keep them out of the way and you just screw it onto the back here. And now the instructions say to line up this label with this clip and just insert it in there. And now put a couple zip ties around it on either end. And now we can connect the extruder bus connector into the main board of the extruder. And then there's just three screws to lock that in place. And while we're here, we can connect the PTFE tube into the extruder. Now we can connect the filament runout sensor wire and the Y stepper motor cable. And also the limit switch cable. And we're gonna hide this cable behind this seal. So you're just gonna remove it, tuck it in and then reseal it. And then you can plug in those wires at the bottom here. Now the X axis stepper motor and now we can plug in the wire for the indicator light on the front, as well as the LED strip. And then plug that wire in at the bottom. And at this point, the printer is fully assembled. We can just plug it in, power it up, and then I'm gonna do some test prints and see how that goes, and then I'll get back to you. One nice feature of this printer is this status light. So you can see right now it's orange because it's in a standby mode. While it's printing, it'll be green. And it's nice if you're running a big print farm and you just want a quick glance and you can tell what the printer's doing. Loading the filament is very simple, much like other printers. Put the spool on the side, feed it up through the sensor, through the runout sensor. Then this tube just pulls out. Keep feeding it. Unlock this, 
and then insert it all the way down. Hit the extrude button, lock the extruder, and insert the tube. So first up, of course, we printed a Benchy as tradition, but it almost looks funny printing it on this massive bed, this tiny little object in the middle. But it did a good job with it. Of course, like Creality's other modern printers, it was pretty fast, and the quality looks really good, consistent with their other printers as well. And this was printed on the Hyper PLA white that's included with the printer. Next up, we printed something a little bit bigger. This is a garbage chute for a K2 printer, one of our other printers downstairs. And I printed this sideways on the bed to really test out the full width of the bed to make sure there was no warping or lifting off the bed. And it printed it really well and quick as well. That is one thing to be concerned about when printing on really big beds. You don't want it to be lifting up on the edge. Big parts tend to do that. And this did a good job at avoiding that. Next up, we printed something a little bit taller this time to test the height. This is the waste bin for the K2 printer as well. And I wanted to print something a little taller to see the consistency of the print throughout a taller print. And as typical of printers of this style, the print is pretty consistent throughout. You know, on bed slinger type printers, the quality gets worse throughout the height of the print, but this printer gave us a nice consistent quality throughout. And this was printed on a generic PLA and it took about six hours. So once again, I think Creality delivered on their promise of the Ender 5 series, and that is massive build size for a pretty good price. And one thing I noticed is the strength of this printer. It is very solidly built. When I shake it like this, the printer stays still and the whole table moves. This doesn't flex at all. So that is the Ender 5 Max. What do you think of this series of printers? Have you owned one in the past? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next time.